Hi, I'm Zoe Blade and I'd like to talk to you about this uh, set of modules here. Uh, the very basic dope uh, sequencer modules. It's uh, a clock divider and a clock sequencer and an ore combiner. This really harkens back to say the 1960s and generally up until the late 70s. Once uh, microprocessors hit the market, this kind of technology became pretty much instantly obsolete. I mean, this is literally whenever you want to enter a new node, you patch in another wire and that's your node. So this is kind of uh, the technology, this along with the, um, the pitched capable ones where you twiddle a knob to enter each note, uh, those would have been precursors to, you know, before you had CPUs, before you had microcontrollers. This is how they would have done it in the 60s. So if you like uh, prog rock or cosmic music, uh, that uses these kinds of things, these kinds of sequences, and also the pitched equivalent of these, where it's just eight knobs to control eight pitches that you'd need to manually tune every single note to make sure it actually is a note, not in between the notes in, in terms of the pitch. So if you ever listen to that kind of music and you wonder, oh, how come it's just looping every eight notes? This is why, because this is all they do. This is how they work. So this harkens back to those days. If you've always wanted a, a 60s or 70s style kind of sequencer, this, this is that. It is the kind of thing that you would have had on your, on your modular or Roland 100M. They had the, the kinds with the knobs and the pitches, but this is a, a much more basic version of that exact kind of thing where it's just eight notes. There's no storage. It remembers it because it's physically still set to those positions of the knobs, or in the case of this one, the wires are physically connected to those notes. So it's very, very basic and simple. You can see exactly how everything works and there's no computers involved. So, um, first of all, we've got uh, an LFO, which is just uh, outputting uh, a steady stream of pulses. It goes on, off, on, off, on, off until you turn it off. So let's hook that up to the clock divider. Now what this does is it counts in binary. Uh, it's basically a uh, six bit number. So this all counts uh, on off on off. Uh, this uh, is the, the next column across if you're used to counting in binary. Next column across. So it'll count every two, every four, 8, 16, 32, 64. So it counts up to 64 and then resets. And what this here does next to it is it looks uh, all the ways it's counting up to eight. It's just like the first three digits, the, the least significant three digits. And it will look at those and it will just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it just loops through eight notes and rests. So let's connect that now. So we're taking the pulses coming out. Actually, let's do it polarized. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's do it unipolar uh, instead of bipolar. So really, it doesn't make any difference if it goes beneath zero. All we care about is whether it's zero or above, which is what this one outputs. You can see zero or above. So we'll take the output of that. And it probably makes no difference in just being a norm paranoid here. Uh, we'll take the output of that, put it into the trigger end of the clock divider. And you can see now it's starting to count up in binary, in sync with each clock pulse from the LFO. And the sequencer here is going up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if we change the speed of the LFO, it will change the speed that it's counting at. And we can do it a bit higher as well. If we change it to, let's see that one, and go really quite fast. So let's take some outputs here uh, and combine them together and feed them into uh, a decay. So we can take the output of what's going to be all of them combined and pop them into the trigger in of the decay. So this will light up whenever we connect any of these to these and these get triggered. So let's speed it back up again a bit. So we can see what we're doing. Okay, so I want to make a rhythm that goes ba 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 ba. So I want the first, fourth, and seventh uh, notes out of every eight. So let's uh, connect those. So we get the output of the first, connect it to any of these, and you can see now that's triggering. 
the uh, the voltage control decay and we'll get the fourth one as well and we can connect it to any of these outputs so it really doesn't make any difference which ba 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 that's good okay and then we get the seventh as well and connect that to any of them ba 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 so there you go that's that working so uh, a few caveats here. This very, very basic sequencer will always loop through exactly eight notes worth of length here and it just keeps on looping forever. Um, if you want more than eight notes or if you want less than eight notes, it cannot do that as far as I'm aware. Um, I mean, you could if you fed in a reset signal, but then you'd need to work out a way of telling it when to feed in a reset signal. Um, Actually, now that I think about it, we could take the output of this and feed that into the reset signal. Let's see if that works. So if we want to make it, say, five notes long, can we feed it into itself? Ha! Huh. So we can make it four notes long by doing that. That's quite neat. So it turns out you can make it shorter than eight notes, but not longer. That's quite nice. I like that. OK, so what is this good for? I think I'm going to be using this more for adding uh, texture to patches rather than actually adding in the notes. So say I've got a long sustain note but I want to say rhythmically change the filter's cutoff point, a kind of stepping filter type thing. Also I'm going to be using this in my next track purely because it's very videogenic looking. Um, I've already got the notes in the door but it happens to be uh, an eight note and rest loop and it happens to not have any velocities therefore uh, I can use this to, to make that sequence and it's going to look nicer in a video so if you care about like you know the, the visual aesthetics of things because you're making videos as well as the actual sounds then uh, yeah it'll be good for that and you know if uh, you're inspired by how the equipment looks then you know, if you like that whole kind of retro aesthetic, it is very much that. But, um, you know, objectively, microcontrollers have kind of been where it's at since the late 70s, early 80s. <laughs> this is very much obsolete, but fun.